What is going on, guys? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. We have on Brandy and Alex. How you guys doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Good. It's, it's been a while. Well, it, it has been quite a while. It really has been, especially with the three of us. So it's good to have everyone on again. Um, how's the Have how's the three the of us ever been on together before? I think we have once, but it's been a while. Once yeah. Hmm. I know. How, how's the takes? I think um, me, me, myself, I've got a new saltwater tank brewing right here. And mm -hmm. I've got um, a couple of freshwater tanks going on behind me. Nice. The the multiple tank syndrome has a, kicked in. Um, a goby <laughs> with a... Oh, my God. It's a problem. I, got that one. I think it looks so cool. I'm going to get a big carpet anemone to put in there. And got a little goby that has a mated pair of pistol shrimps with them. Oh, so that's cool. That's going to be a really cool little thing. That'd be really cool. I've never actually had a pair of pistols, just single ones. Huh, that'd be cool. Very that cool. would be cool. Yeah, ma'am. How's your tank doing in the background there? I can, I can see through it, which is nice. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I've been on your uh, stream a couple times. Remember, mm -hmm. I, I think it's been almost three years now since uh, my Oceanic Tech Tank yeah. went. Uh, and uh, three years now so far. Uh, and uh, I've, I've been having some, um, uh, you know, work stuff and personal stuff getting in the way and this and that. And uh, last weekend, uh, my wife looks at me and she's like, hey, uh, Alec, uh, are you going to clean the tank? I'm like, oh, why? And she's like, well, I can't see into it. It's all pink and, pink and purple. Uh, and I come over to it. I'm like, yeah, okay. So last Saturday, I took, like, it was a full maintenance day. Like, I woke up, like, at 7 o'clock in the morning, had a cup of coffee, and then I just went to work. Uh, I did a full, like, like sump, like, uh, some uh, suck out. I did a uh, my vacuum by sand. Did a uh, actually did a water change. I mean, it was only like like a thirty gallon, but I actually did a little water. It was mostly like a sump change. Mm. <laughs> um, and then wait, did we no, just lose Dev? Oh, and no. um, okay. then uh, it was onto the glass and start scraping the glass, cleaning everything's all pink and green and can't see into it changed out the filters a couple times came back, yeah came back a couple hours later it was crystal clear and i'm like oh my god my coral grew like my sps is exploding i have sps like growing into each other fighting the style of four is growing like weeds and, uh, i have i didn't know i have like i had monty uh, i had like monty's like plating in the back of the tank i'd never saw before all of a sudden they're like they're growing out and they're now creeping up the back of the wall like oh. way in back i'm like I'm... how how long has it, it been since you can see it <laughs> exactly well again you know i i had some personal work <laughs> issues and i have been adding you know uh, calcium alkalinity to my auto stuff in the mm. other cabinet been feeding it and i have the auto feeder and throwing mice in there and everything and um i probably haven't touched the tank in about over a month okay so it's been and, a month since you've given it a good it's not bad it wasn't bad but yeah it's probably more but like with the amount of i, I gotta find a uh i, I gotta find a picture i took it's a picture of it more. And <laughs> it was just almost completely pink like yeah. i could like I, I could see like some of my 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 sail tank fins like you know just eating off the glass <laughs> mm -hmm. but then i was thinking to myself and then after i cleaned it sat down and i was like just staring at my tank for a while and i'm like huh you know that advice i got like you know keep your hands less wet mm -hmm. you know don't tinker too much with your tank let it do its thing i let it do its thing and it 
they thrived. So there's, there's definitely <laughs> I mean, I get it. some granted solid it was like it, And granted, it's it's more of an established tank. It's you know three years now, so it's it's been you know through the grinder a couple of times. I have a little bit of cyano, I think, on the sand, but for the for today, I sort of like took the turkey baster and blew it away, and it looks nice now. Yeah, nice <laughs> beauty. <laughs> There is definitely something to be said about keeping your hands out of the tank. And and like we said too, like when you haven't seen your tank for a while, when you look at I know if I'm on vacation for a week or two and I look at it, you like notice so much different. Or if you look at it every day, you'll see those subtle changes. You don't really pick up on the changes. Yeah. yeah. If you if you walk by it every single day, twice a day, three times a day, you barely see a, a difference. And that's why I really encourage people to always like, you know, take a nice zoomed in picture of like one little area of your tank of like a piece of coral like each like every couple of weeks or whatever take another mm-hmm. picture of it and then go through and be like oh wow the, the coral actually does grow yeah <laughs> <laughs> and you're like oh wow that's actually grew a lot i just you know because you just see this it's almost the same formation of coral to mm-hmm. your eyes i need to that part how to get the corals to grow well i mean have a three-year tank and throw a bunch of style four in there it'll grow <laughs> <laughs> yeah fair you said you had some coral spawning recently I too, didn't you? my tank had been dead. Well, I, well that's the thing yeah like, you know i know stylo sort of just releases spores all, all, all over the tank all the time and so that's why i've, I've sort of like you know dubbed it like the 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 weeds of SPS because it just like you know and it's it was like a coral I I was like at at the at the at my ro- local uh, fish store and I was getting like some mysis or some like, I was just looking around and I mm-hmm. saw like they had like a like a five dollar frag it was like a big one so yeah. I'm like yeah you know what I'll throw it in there I got a little place for it and I put that in like you know you know three years ago and now it's like you know this you big and it, and it's like spreading throughout the whole tank, mm-hmm. and I don't know. Ever since I cleaned it, and I've seen this before, like with coral spawning, like it, especially with stellar, it has to release a spore and land somewhere and grow, you mm-hmm. know. So. I basically consider that coral spawning. You know, it's not. It's not. It's it's not like I'm breaking off. Uh, it's it's not like I'm fragging off pieces and you know gluing it everywhere. Yeah. I just you know after a while, all of a sudden, I'm like, huh? Why do I have a little like golf size, golf ball size little coral way in the corner now that I didn't do self propagating? <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, hey, you know, I mean, yeah, it's green, but you know what? It's still pretty. Yeah. All, at all at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Like, I don't know. I find two people get caught up in the name game and they only want their $300 Walt Disney frags. It's like, you know, that's I freaking love a green slime or anything that's bright and colorful. Like, I'm happy. I, I yeah. can care less what it's called. You know, and, and especially with like when like a non aquatic reef person comes into my house and they come up to my tank, I'm like, oh, wow, that looks so beautiful. And I'm like, yeah. It's yeah. nice, I guess, you know. And they're like, oh, no, really, it's it's beautiful. And you know, it it, it is beautiful. And that's mm-hmm. you know. Uh the only thing that's ha- bad ha- that has happened, I guess, in the past, you know, year, I did lose my elegance coral that I had for like two years. Yeah. That's oh so man, fun. and you've been yeah. like up and down. Yeah, and he, he was like the size of a football. He was actually he's right here mm-hmm. it was a huge guy right here and um uh he it was it was actually hosting uh my clownfish they were you know net, nestling in there and everything yeah. and in the past i had issues with it um what really worked for me uh it because it, it it had the um the uh elegance coral syndrome that little cotton candy stuff you get and it starts to like, shrivel up and yeah, basically just decay in it, itself uh what i did um i forgot who told me exactly but they're like you know what just get a small little feeder tank little, or like a tupperware container put some water in it and uh let it soak there for five minutes i'm like put, put some what, what in it you chopped up uh, uh rodi oh water. oh interesting hmm. and let it sit there for five minutes i'm like 
five minutes and already eye water really i'm like oh you know at this point it looks like it's gonna die anyway i mean i'll yeah. try anything I, I did it i put it in there and it was like uh, two days later it exploded and just really tentacles were all out and it was i'm like wow okay i guess rodi water dip is i did it so it worked for me <laughs> like, wait wait but, but you don't have it anymore how long ago was this experiment oh no no the, the, okay, uh, okay. Uh, this this is experiment was like uh two years ago okay okay unrelated okay so it's good to yeah. know that works yeah this was this was when we were still doing this one we were still doing live streams yeah. and and it yeah it is why I'm disappointed that you it lost was, it. And it was like, like really, it was like a really bad baby that quarrel. It was like I like spot fed it and everything. It was it was a nice Aussie like a it was like a green with like neon blue tips. It was really yeah. really pretty. But you know, we you... we uh, do what we, we we do what we can for our animals. Pretty you know, much. And sometimes. Would you get an elegance again? Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. definitely. I've been I've been just shopping around for the. I, I, I try to want to. I, I want to find the exact same color scheme that I had. It was. It's. It's hard to find it, but um, I have a, I have a friend of mine actually locally, and he actually just got in a bunch of uh, Aussies. So I'm gonna go over there and take a look and see. And definitely, I mean, um, I, I, some people are afraid. Of keeping elegance corals, uh, they're actually not as hard to take care of as you as you think. Yeah, um, that's fair. As long, I mean, I I kept them really down like un, underneath like a little like Eve, and he would mm -hmm. like sort of creep creep out. So he wasn't in direct sun. He wasn't like in completely darkness, but he was right there at the bottom. He was happy, and you know maybe twice a week I would you know just spot feed him mysis. That's it. Nice. It was good. Yeah, when I've had them in the past, I, I always broadcast feed the tank mice, and most things got it. Spot feeding probably is better, though. Well, yeah. I mean, I, when I would, when I had uh, broadcast feed mice, I mean, it's like a it's like a whirlwind of uh, it's like a snow globe of just little shrimpies everywhere. Yeah. And yeah, they, they would you know you know eventually catch it. Actually, some of my clownfish would actually spit into it which was pretty cool oh, feel like an enemy that's cool exactly yeah um dipping them in oa helps them big time i think that's oxalinic acid i believe that's i've heard of people using that as a dip as well so that's interesting reef v2 is that like what concentration would you in duration would you do on that one i've never I'm used it but ap that. apparently people use it for like koi ponds and that type of stuff and I've heard a few like coral farmer type people talk about using those dips, so I'm curious. Okay. Randy, welcome to the channel. I think I'm really, really <laughs> choppy, by the way. You are on and off. You're okay right now. <laughs> finally but, yeah. subscribed. Yeah, finally subscribed. Okay. Better late than ever. Um, Sorry, I'm welcome. like just making jokes in chat. Yeah, that's what I figured. <laughs> We will get you a proper wire connection one day. <laughs> oh. So why are elegance corals sometimes so hard to care for? I mean, there's the Malaysian side of it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the and, and, there, and there's the Aussie side of it. And from it's it's interesting. I get conflicting. I, I've, I've talked to elegance people, the the specialists and the professionals of elegance corals, and some of them will say that the Malaysian ones are absolutely ridiculously hard to take care of. They um, mm -hmm. are are susceptible to all types of different bacteria, and that's what, why they sometimes shrivel up and get that elegance coral syndrome. They get that cotton candy look on them, and then other people say, "No, no, no! It's it's it, it's those Aussie corals. The Aussie corals are the ones that you know are susceptible, and their immune systems are not great in our in our reef tanks because we, our reef tanks are dirty and blah 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 and this and that." So, I don't yeah. know. 
I, like on, quite honestly, I don't have that much experience with Elegant Scroll. Like I, quite honestly, that Elegant Scroll that I had was like my first Elegant Scroll I have ever had. Yeah. How long did you have it for? How can you tell the difference between the two types? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Ask when you buy it. <laughs> I think. That, I yeah. mean, uh, you know, if if you were to put like a very similar color Aussie and a very similar color uh, Malaysian together mm -hmm. next to each other, I don't think I would be able to be like the, the the, elegance coral. This <laughs> probably <laughs> doesn't relate, but if you're looking at torches, Indo torches. I find they're usually hardier and they usually have a skinnier skeleton. Or if you look at an Aussie one, they're usually chunkier skeletons. Like that's one way for oh, yeah, that, tor yeah. torches. I have no idea mm -hmm. if there's any correlation with elegance, like skeleton size, but that's usually well, how I can tell with torches at least. Well, like the thing with Jason has the answer. You can tell the difference by their accent. <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, it's it's weird because the the, the skeleton of okay. a actually have the skeleton still in there. Um, the skeleton of the um, elegance coral is sort of uh, it has the same characteristics of a say for example like a wall frog spot. You mm -hmm. know, it's like that elongated, you know, back and forth, and it's never, and it and it sometimes branches out sometimes. So you get sometimes like a crisp like a like a Y. Or, but it's sort of like almost like um, you know uh, the the lips of a clam. Basically, that's what it looks like when you're looking down at it. So it'd be interesting to see if I could get my hands on a uh, Malaysian uh, skeleton and actually cut it mm -hmm. and cut the other one actually and put it under a microscope and see what's if there's actually a difference with maybe the structure of it, if, you know, it actually would be, I, don't know, I had an idea now. It's, it's trickier <laughs> to find those test subjects, but it would be interesting to know if you do do it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay. So fan has giant elegant corals. I think we have a huge delay, by the way. A fan okay. has like these giant elegant corals in his bats that are like, like two feet across or bigger, and he's got multiple of them. He's the man to ask. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to message him. <laughs> yep. Dan, if you're watching, let us know. He creeps in the chat a lot. Um, okay, oxalinic acid dosing, 10 mil per gallon, 15 minutes. Thank you, Reefy, too. I might try that one day once I find some. Where do you get oxalic um, acid from? Pond, pond supply store, pool pool stores. Yeah, uh, I think I, I pro you probably probably get it like at Home Depot too, like a, like a, like a hardware store that like sells like um stuff like pond supplies for koi fish. Hmm. Sounds about right. So koi pond places. Um, starting a, a new nano with dry rock. Any tips? from the pros to cycle it and get through the uglies as quick as possible. Honestly, the biggest thing is if you know anybody that has an established tank, if you can snag, you know, some of that ceramic media or a rock, something to bring over the, the goodness, good bacteria into your tank, it definitely makes a big difference speeding it up. That's what the, this little tank that I have next to me is brand new also. And I got some rock from my sump of my other tank and threw mm -hmm. in there. And I've got all kinds of critters in the tank already. But what happens if there's pests on the rock? We'll oh, there's pests on the rock. Anyways. Exactly. <laughs> no. Exactly. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I noticed immediately a bristle worm. I was like, well, crap. <laughs> well, you know, but the thing is, you know, that's, it's, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. I have bristle worms in here. I have, I have weird stuff in here. I mean, as long as I don't have like a secret bobbit, bobbit in there somewhere. You know, okay. But other other than that, like, yeah, there's ways around it. And you know what? It's in my case, uh, for, from and in my, my experience, it's uh, uh, inevitable. It's it's true. Unless you're going to quarantine everything, everything. Always. and and your corals. That like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to quarantine corals. What are you going to say, Brandy? I think also if you. If you um do start to have any uglies, elbow grease, like just 
clean it. So that way you have free space for um, better options like Coraline to grow instead of mm -hmm. hair algae and stuff. And, yeah. and also don't, and also don't get, uh, you know, uh, uh, disencourage or anything, you know, the uglies it's, it's part of the process. It happens. It's part you of know? paying your dues. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's just, yeah. I, if you can get rock from established tank, that definitely gets rid of a massive chunk of it. Um, as a few people said in the chat, they're like, no lights, dark start. Yeah, not running your lights while you're cycling is big. Otherwise, all you're going to grow is algae, especially if there's nothing in there to eat it and graze on it. Um, so wait till you actually add coral and, you know, some grazers before you turn your lights on. It's definitely a big one. And and don't just start throwing fish after fish after fish. In area. Just take it, like they say, take it take nice it and slow. Yeah. Take it slow. Some yeah. people say fish is what makes it um, problematic, that coral are easy. Yes. Generally, yes. Like the fish <laughs> add waste and nutrients and all that to the water, which could be well, good or bad, depending. Well, the thing is with like adding coral early, the reason why I, I'm not 100% against it, because um, especially if you get coral from different either different stores or different vendors i'm like i'm talking about like getting like zoanthids and, and putting and chopping off the the frag plug and putting it in there mm. um it will actually uh introduce uh different bacteria from you know different areas so you know might as well you know go to different places and introduce you know different types of bacteria yeah it definitely does add to the diversity. I, I have no problem putting corals in early. I mean, I wouldn't put in some fancy aqua early. I give that well, a yeah, little bit of time. I, yeah. But I, I like zoas or like mushrooms, all the type of stuff. Fair game. Like, they're hardy. Oh, yeah. That being said, I know one point, when, this is like years and years ago, when I had like a yeah. little 30 gallon nano, I was upgrading my tank. I bought a colony of, off somebody. And I, it was too big for my tank. So I literally lived in a five gallon bucket for over a month. I had an XR15 on top and a power head and a heater in there, and that was it. <laughs> and I just, you know, did water changes, and it lived in there for like a month. So I mean, that's an acro surviving in a five gallon bucket as a as a tank. So you can definitely put stuff in from day one. Definitely. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's the so it's a catch twenty two because the fish. If you add too many fish, you know, you're likely going to get too many nutrients too quick before your tank can handle it, and then that can lead to algae issues. Same thing if you crank your light too high too early. You're just feeding the the algaes, the nutrients before everything gets established. Instead of uh, bacteria in a bottle, you can do bacteria on a plug. Yep. You should start selling that. I mean, that's that's. I've I've gotten yelled at for saying that, but that's that's what I tell people. I'm like, you know what? Might as well. They put in a couple, you know, little plugs of uh, zoanthids or something. Why not? You know. You know it's, I've never. Yeah, was it Ryan that was saying? Ryan was saying something about the corals taking up ammonia more than nitrates, anyway, right? Yeah, they do. Um, yeah, yeah, they they have an easier job converting ammonia than they do nitrates. Like they can do that process more directly. So yeah, it's definitely is some merit for it. Which adding fish does feed it. So it's always that kind of like catch twenty two, right? But if you had too many fish, you're gonna overrun the nutrients or if you add a little bit and start slow it kind of gives the system time to build up and adapt to it At the end of the day you're basically building up your good bacteria culture that's dealing with all the yeah. nutrients in your system yeah the biggest thing is you basically need to uh, let that good bacteria that's growing all over and inside those those rocks you put in there a yep. chance to multiply and expand because that's ultimately your filter for your your system yeah it's crazy eh when you think about it have you ever tried yeah. legit live rock before like oh, ocean yes. rock yes when, yeah. when 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 it was available yes i'm tempted and I, to try it i would i would get cool stuff i would like the little critters like sometimes you'd get the bad critters but you get these like weird crabs, weird, weird snails. Sometimes all of a sudden, like, where the hell did that fish come from? You know, <laughs> like if it's a little, little tiny like neon something. You're like, what is that? Yeah. Or you know, different types of shrimps that are you know nestled in there, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, 
that's interesting coral and is sometimes you just never know you know what will pop in on that just it's uh, it just feels like it's harder to come by now it's gotten very well, it's expensive, expensive. It's yeah expensive. if the price isn't too insane how expensive is it dev i don't know yet i asked for a price i'm still waiting um if it's not like <laughs> exorbitantly excessively insane i might get a box of like ocean rock to like seed the new tank if i do it and i'll probably just That'd put it cool. my sup and then see what cool stuff i comes think with one it. of the issues is also a lot of companies don't want to collect the live rock out of the ocean because they don't see it as being a very sustainable source of rock so mm -hmm. i think also just finding someone willing to do it is difficult well a lot of a lot of the places where they do the um the ocean rock is they have basically a, a property in the ocean and they basically just dump limestone uh in into there and they just wait years you know mm -hmm. and they you know go through a section by section by section of when the last time they dumped rocks into there and then they go down there and pick out rocks so they it's not like you know the back in the day where basically people were taking a basically a little hammer and cracking off pieces yeah. of you know a set that makes rock. A yeah and so and, you're using the ocean to seed your rock essentially take a bunch yeah. of rock throw it in there for like a we're year get, or two we're getting then come some, get it. yeah we're getting some prices in the in the chat chris said if, 15 to 20 dollars per pound and reef v2 said 26 well, wow. I'll see how scary Canadian it is when I find out how much. I'm still waiting oh, on God. a block of Aussie rock. The 10 price. 10 pounds medium, minimum. Right. 10 pounds is not a very big piece either. You're, you're, you're in BC too, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's, that's the a, a ways. Well, reef with me. I work at a reef store. I can, <laughs> I can steal some rock from a very established sump uh, that doesn't have much pass. There you go. You want to avoid the uglies? That right there is your solution. You can snag if you rock know rock what? In there, you'll be golden. Golden. Your tank will my, establish my way LFS, quicker. My LFS shut down someone's tank that had been running for like 70 years. Not 70 years. Since 1970. Yeah. And the rock that they had in it was live rock at one point. I don't know what it's considered, but I got some of his rock. And I gave a piece of it this Moyer recently. And it's like this mm -hmm. it looks like a giant piece of coral. And... It's does it still count as live rock when it's been in someone's tank for 50 years? I mean, that's also good. I don't I mean, know if it's as good as the ocean, but it's up there. It's pretty close. Like it won't well, be as diverse, uh, but it'll, it'll, it'll bring good 50 years of goodness into your system. Like, for example, if, like if you like in your area went and like Googled all your local like fish, fish stores, like within like a 50 mile radius and you got like a little five pound rock from here, five pound rock from there, five pound rock from here, and came back and put those all in. I would have to pay good. for that. Yeah. You may get some pests, but I don't know. Yeah. You're, you're usually going to get them eventually, anyways, unless you quarantine absolutely everything. And very few people will actually do that. So, I mean, if you're doing fully 100% sterile, like you're just delaying the inevitable, eventually it will still find a way. Like literally every coral going yeah, to your tank to needs to be quarantined. Like first, if you want to avoid pests ever. Yeah. I have. I just added some fish to my tank. I got a yellow tang, three antheas, and a diamond goby, and mm -hmm. added them straight to the tank. And I got a lot of a lot of flack online that I was yep. I was creating a dumpster fire for myself because I didn't yeah. QT the fish first. Like, hmm. well, okay. I don't. I, I don't quarantine my fish either. I'm I'm more uh, uh, interested in <laughs> on in what type of anthias did you put in? More liar tails. Oh, nice. I had a a rock flower anemone eat one of my liar tails, like mm. captured it. I watched it eat it. The, it was not dead. It was alive, which was very mm. hard to watch. And mm. I wanted to add another one, but I didn't want to add just one, so I got three more. Got Makes so sense. many fish now. Friends, so pretty. Right? They need friends. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they fit into the school immediately, too. Like, they haven't fought at all. It's amazing. Mm. Okay. Reef with me. 15 gallon. How many pounds should I put in there of established rock? You kind of just got to look at the size of it. I mean, 
when you, it's hard to say pounds these days because you could look at something that's, you know, a fake man-made cement rock that weighs a ton. And there's other ones that weigh next to nothing. Like if I look at like a carob sea rock, like it's got some heft to it. If I look at an aquaforest forest rock, it weighs like nothing. Like it's like, so, so it's hard to say based off weight. You kind of just got to look at the size of it, what fits the tank. A couple pieces and you'll be pretty good. It's, it's really what, what you want to see in your tank, what you're, and also it's not more the poundage or the calculation of the rock is you should think about later on in the future of your tank, what are you going to be putting into your tank? What type of a habitat are you trying to create for a certain type of fish? And so oh. if you're going to have, you know, if you're going to have uh, more rock dwelling fish, you know, make sure you put caves and crevices and more intricate little rocks if you're getting more of like clownfish that they don't even care about rocks you know you can mm. put a little mound there <laughs> so yeah okay that, that's okay in the chat lathorial is this rock from established tank better than sand from an established tank you can absolutely steal a handful of sand as well like sand is a ton of surface area and just like throw that onto your own sand and mix it in it will also bring in good stuff but definitely yep um yeah I watched... ryan washington said personal opinions 195 gallon big enough for a selfin and a blonde naso my two dream fish and planning an upgrade i will say i have a 160 gallon tank i believe and i have both those fish and a yellow tang and a tamini tang and a blue hip hippo tang and they all get along very nicely the biggest thing, in my opinion, the biggest thing with tangs is just the swimming space. So you're over six feet. So it's a good length. I, you know, I'd in a three or four foot tank, I'm like, yeah, when you're pushing six plus feet, like that's a lot of swimming space for them. The 30 is kind of a nice 75 by 30. I, I would say you're probably pretty good. I mean, blonde nasals can get large later in life, but. It's, it's the, it's the swimming space and able, like, especially with how many tangs you have there you want to be able to make sure that they have a place to mess one for the night you know if you have a one one rock for example if you have, if you have like one rock in your tank and it's a huge tank and you have a couple tanks it's going to be it's going to be horrible you want to make sure that they all have like a little apartment to go to at the end of the night uh so they can nestle in and be happy that's and that's one thing that i always have uh um, you know, pressured people or not pressured, but like advocated for mm -hmm. is, you know, like, you know, he's bullied people into this. <laughs> well, it, I, I, what is it? I, the four H's? No, the three H's. Three H's. Mm -hmm. Habitat, health, and husbandry. You said four, three, no, and homes. Three. Well, homes for habitat. That's, that's ha that's habitat. So habit Heidi habitat, holes. Heidi holes. Yeah, hi hi little Heidi holes. Habitat, husbandry, and health. You yep. know, you want to make sure you know you're feeding your fish. Uh, you know, make sure they're getting the correct vitamins and uh, mm. nutrients, all that kind of stuff. Uh, habitat, a place they have to stay. Make sure, and it's a, a like a correct place to stay because, mm. like you know, um, you're not going to put a um, a uh, what is it called uh, the my, his name is Bubblegum. My my daughter named him. Nice. Uh, my, uh, uh, my, my my Rass. It's it's the rainbow colored. I forgot the name. Um, uh, but you you're not going to put that type of ra uh, uh, Rass um, into a you know bare bottom tank. They need sand. So it's thinking about what the, the fish needs in his natural habitat. And then husbandry. You know, make sure. You know, sometimes I don't clean as well, but uh, you know, making sure you're, you know, keeping up on the, you make sure the parameters are good and this and that for the fish and they have a good place. And if you do that, um, mm -hmm. you, you can check off my, my fish are not stressed and my ick is not going to come out because I, I have yeah. ick in my tank. And if, if I do those th three things and You'll pay attention to them, I'll never see it. Yeah, it's true. And the other big thing too if you know in respect to ick and stuff is if you feed a fair amount if you're a skimpy feeder they'll be more aggressive or if you feed you know you feed nori daily you know you feed what 
Pilots frozen, whatever you're, but you just make sure that they're like a well balanced, you know, fairly frequent feedings. There's a lot less aggression too. Oh yeah, they're hungry. They're more scrappy. I think like that line of sight thing is super important. Like mm -hmm. even my tank, there's not a place I can stand in my tank and see everything. Like like every place I can stand outside the tank, I can maybe see a third of everything. Yep, because there's lots of walls okay. and crevices and tunnels. All right. Opinions. I have been contemplating a new possible office tank. And I've also been contemplating different aquascape ideas. And my current thought, potential thought process is trying to float most of the scape, which again, I mean, it might not be quite as good for habitat because you're missing all the ground contact. But again, if you have a bunch floating, there's still tons of stuff. And you have like a giant it. cave or a giant ledge. But yeah, it, de it but depends. It depends. On, you're creating, I think you're creating a habitat. So you got to look at the types of fish mm -hmm. and types of areas that like to hang out in a overhang like that, because you're basically going to create like overhang. Well, I'm also debating if I do it more Tonga branch style. So there is tons of different spots mm -hmm. within the floatingness. I have this crazy idea in my head. I'm still trying to figure out I'm going to make it. But I've actually, seen, uh, some of the 3D rendering so far they look really cool yeah i, I haven't 100 percent decided if i'm going to try fully 3d printing it or if i'm going to get some actual <laughs> rock but i want it to be very floaty i think that's like one of the vibes i'm going to go for in this one i mean i i've seen a couple i mean um uh, max max reef I, I i know i it was probably like a year ago now it's, it's been a while uh but I, I know he actually created like this like acrylic printed thing and he put his rock going out yeah. And it just looks like there's just like this like strip of rock that just jets out underneath. It's bare on the top. It's bare. it's it looks cool. Yeah, I like that. I I think that'd be kind of cool. That'd That's be cool. something they do a lot in freshwater, also, where they take like a piece of wood or something and they balance it on <sighs> the edges of the tank so that it's like floating, but it's not completely floating. And I think that's such a cool look. I'm like, mm -hmm. if you do a 3D printed thing, you should do something like that. That would be incredible. If you have any examples, send me photos later. I will send you photos. Perfect. I'm going to send you a gonna, photo right now. I think. I'm going to send you photos. Uh, I, I, uh, a very long time ago, I had a 300 gallon acrylic uh, Amazon, uh, Amazonian tank. Mm -hmm. with Car Car Cardinal Terreras, uh, Angelfish, Discus, everything, and basically made a river and had that whole look of like a root system. Yeah. Th th nice. There is still a little part of me that's like, I like the fresh water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> J Java I mean, Moss, come on. <laughs> well, you just need a mangrove take. I mean, come on now. You, 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 get, you get some well, mangroves well, I... and get your roots and you could do the saltwater vibe and get like rock yeah. flowers on the bottom. That's actually a build I've been actually talking with uh, Joe from Glass Cages, and I've, I've sent, sent him a couple plans for it. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be more of a basement build, mm -hmm. uh, but um, basically a um, it's going to be a square like a like a four by four by four by mm -hmm. two. Nice. And having basically like an island in the middle and lagoon and basically having a, a ginormous like mangrove coming up with grow cool. lights on the top of oh, it. Oh, that sounds cool. And just having all like different softies and everything and just, and, and, and just all the roots going through. Like, yeah. Do it. Basically, almost like where I, I don't want to do a, a brack tank, but basically almost where you know it, you're getting into the almost brackish waters you know those like the mangroves where everything is like the yeah. water's very very still you know, b barely any current it's all the softies and they have it's a lot of the smaller fish yep i would love to that's 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 a plan that'd be awesome you can get really cool like micro nano gobies that are like an inch and stuff like you know it's loaded with like a oh. ton of those guys it'd be pretty sweet i I actually throw those into uh, this tank actually all the time, and I see them perch everywhere. Yeah. And I have uh, it's it's the yellow with the black stripe, mm -hmm. a little uh, mini goby, and then there's the, there's the uh, neon goby. It's like a blue with like a black stripe on it. Yep, awesome. Yeah, super cool. And, and, 
and that's another thing like people are like oh you know i don't know what else what what, what other fish i can add you go into like the those types of fish and as long as you don't have fish that eat that size fish <laughs> yep. um throw them in there and it just it creates this like different layer of um you know of these like inhabitants that are living in there and you like don't you notice them but you're, you're looking at a piece of coral and all of a sudden this little tiny fish about this big like swims out and just like perching there i'm like oh yeah <laughs> that's a little goby I, I love the micro life for that. Like, it's so cool when you just like all of a sudden you see all these all oh, tiny creatures, you know, the more you look, the I more you love find it. Yes. Well, right. that's like the other day. Like, all of a sudden, I'm like, oh my God, I actually have that many crabs in here. Like, they're, 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 they're coming out <laughs> of nowhere. Like, I have like I have these little emerald crabs everywhere. I have, uh, you know, all, all these hermit crabs, and I haven't seen them for a while. And all of a sudden, one day, like, especially after I cleaned the tank, I think it's probably because all the crap was everywhere. Yeah. Uh, they all come out. And they're like eating everything. I'm like, oh my god, I have a lot of crabs in here, and I didn't even know. Are they reproducing? I don't know, but I'm like, wow, I have Bonus? a lot of, <laughs> I have a lot of stuff in there that I never see. Yeah, well, that's a bonus. Except I don't well, know. Well, it's welts. I have a lot of at night. That sucks. It's fun at when you the find stuff. at the um, aquatic gardeners association meeting two weeks ago, I think um so it's freshwater but someone brought in um a saltwater macro algae tank mm -hmm. and it was a small tank like maybe 10 gallons um he was on the chat earlier these little tiny fish like that and he had like these snails that were like the, their bodies were bright bright red like yeah like a flame hawk fish bright red i had never seen that before oh, and that's cool um, a bunch of like pom pom crabs Those and cool. sexy shrimp, and I took a video of it. I have to edit it and put it up on YouTube still, but it was just and like thirty different types of macro algaes, and yep. it was just absolutely incredible. I was like, oh, I want to do this. Ooh, if you do do the lagoon cell tank, um, there's tons of cool little pipe fish and other really cool stuff that probably do really well if you had lots of pods yeah. and macros and stuff. Oh Heck yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. I, well, the other thing I wanted to do, the reason why I wanted to do like like a two foot high, I wanted to put like a really, really thick sand bed in there and get those uh, those uh, little mini eels that sort of stick out just like. Yeah. Are, are what they're called. But, yeah, the garden eels. And so they, cool. they, and they, 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 just, they, they, they just like stick up on the sand and they just like, and then come back down. Yeah, I love but those. I, awesome. You need... You need awesome. like an eight to twelve inch sand bed for those guys, but they're super exactly. cool. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I debated those two one day. They're so awesome. One day. So that's that's my that's my I'm 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 still in in the drawing phase. I have yeah. basically preliminary um, designs with uh, Joe and um, actually do have it, a little. Do like a thirty know. inch. Do you like a 30 inch tank with like a 12 inch freaking sand bed and your mangroves and your garden eels would love it. That'd be the so cool. Oh, yeah. That'd be, that'd be fun. And then your tanks secretly tanks only right two now? feet deep. Mm -hmm. Huh? Do you just have the one tank right now? Right now? Yes. I mean, in the past I've had multiple, multiple one tanks mm -hmm. uh, right now. How many do you have right now, Dev? Three. I got. It. I have <laughs> I say, that took a really long time to I, count. I had a nano <laughs> little little tiny one, and um, it got infested with uh, uh, flat ones. Yeah. I'm like, uh. it was like like a like I mean like nano 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 like the small little super little, nano. Like the PNW, the hard little the Harley little, 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 little one by one by one. It was like a yeah. it was like a little like a little. The Elos tank. Oh, yeah. was it the Elos tank? My baby <laughs> fish is in it now. I, you know, I I, I, I had <laughs> mushrooms in that at, at, in that thing, and I had I forget what type of light I had on the top of it, and it, it was it was going okay. Yeah, they, yeah, they, 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 GMC? GMC light. It was a good, that awesome light. Um, and I, I, I had some mushrooms in there. I had some. Uh, <laughs> I had some. Uh, what else did I have? And uh, had some zoas in there, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, and I put some like little, little I, I put in the little gobies, the, little, the mini gobies, and had some crabs. It was going well, but you know, 
it was so much maintenance because I didn't really have any type of filtration on it. Mm-hmm. I, bis- I, I basically mm-hmm. just had a circulation pump inside of it and, and a little tiny mini heater. And I was just doing like, I mean, a 50% like water change is basically like me like putting like in a cup of water and dumping it out and a cup of water from my tank and putting it into there. <laughs> and that's basically what I did, but I just, yeah. All of a sudden, I, I, I didn't have any rashes in there because like, because I'm guessing I have flatworms in my tank, but I don't yeah. have anything to eat it. So all of a sudden, I'm like mm-hmm. looking like, oh, my God, where are all these brown things? Like, Ew. And there are just like hundreds yeah. of them, like multiplying them. Like, uh, like, and a one-gallon one tank. tank. And I'm like, uh, uh, So uh, I'm like, cool. My yeah. little tank turned into a flatworm tank. I don't want to grow flatworms. Yeah. I'm fine. But uh, but then I'm, then I'm like again I'm like wow good job Ras he's doing a good job when they're keeping those flatworms at yeah. bay. <laughs> no kidding. You know what? You'd almost need like two dosing pumps to like water change back and forth between the two, so you don't yeah. have to like do much. Uh, oh oh, good night. That's a good idea. <laughs> That's what I would do if I had a super dano, just to make my Aww. life easier. I, I, I was actually thinking about it. I, I, like I was gonna get, get like a uh, like a, a DOS and like throw throw it on the side and just have it slurp into here, and then I'll like drill a hole to the basement and have it like dump out into the basement. I'm like, do I really? Huh? Yeah. I'm like, do, do I really like? Am I really going to like put another hole in my in in the in the my living room floor and so dedicated you are well because i already have like holes in my living room floor already going to my basement for that's what i mean you might have a hole you can pull close to it's easy a big one and put like a gasket or something well because like (laughs) the manifold on your wall to hook up futures (laughs) futures yeah (laughs) the the wife is already like what what do you mean you're gonna put another tank i'm like well it's not gonna be in the house it's gonna be the basement she's like okay but I'm like, I do have a place in the living room for like another like 200 gallon. So we should do that. And just like, <laughs> <laughs> and and then I've now talking to Joe about putting mm-hmm. a tank in right here. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what I'm gonna do is th- three feet wide, six feet long, and 20 inches deep nice. on a short stand. And I was talking to him about doing a peninsula overflow. Mm-hmm. But I've lately changed my mind to maybe doing like one of the center ones. Mm-hmm. So that way I have a place to like stack rock up against. I think that'd be really cool. Makes sense. I think on my new one, I'm going to do just like the regular back center overflow thing because then I could mount stuff to the back wall and make it more floaty. Well, I was going to say uh, for your the back glass, what are you going to do? Are you going to have it? painted or well if i do a standard style tank Me or then it, Dev. yeah who Be- because the, the, the reason why i say this like I, the next ta- the next type of like long because i'm i'm working on the like the big lagoon but the next yeah. like long tank i want to do um i want to have clear glass in the back completely mm-hmm. and uh put up that um it's like that like opaque film on the back oh yeah i know what you mean what's his name rob yes rob. Mm-hmm. i'm blanking with, on his with, name. With the, the mustache yeah rob yeah rob it's so cool tank. and I, I think it's oh it's uh what was the I, for, I forgot the brand of the lights it is it's a it's like that like cheap pump that they make too well I'll tell that'd be so cool to like have a led um basically like program for like in the morning it's like bright and then like and then in in the evening it gets to like an orange color looks like sunset or or just like a different type of like purpley blue to, mm-hmm. to it would be cool yeah it'd be cool i want clear glass all the way around on the tank i'm doing all the way around are you gonna do an overflow I... yeah in the center okay so i was saying Mm. Like the ones that come up in the middle of the tank, I think that I want to do because it's going to be nice and long and wide enough that I think that would actually work out really well. Yes. And then it gives me options with flow 
that yeah. a peninsula doesn't give you because I can attach stuff to the center overflow True. instead of just on one end. I mean, yeah, I, cool. again, there, there there's always pros and cons with the with the type of um, overflow you have. You know, with a peninsula, they're they're awesome. I I, I, I I've never had a peninsula. It's I awesome. love my and, peninsula. And it's I, awesome. I, I, I haven't not had a peninsula in years. E even like, which is funny, because even like this tank is still a peninsula. I put, I just put black vinyl on the back wall and put it against the wall, but the overflow is still over here. So it's it's funny because it's been so long since I've done just like regular style. A, a regular, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I, I, it's really, it's really the the, um, I guess the the tricky part is to getting the flow Hello. just right to make sure. Especially at the way back at the end to make sure nothing's like collecting up the, at the end mm. and starting to just like fester a little there. So here's an interesting one. If I do like a 22 inch tall tank and float my rock scape, do I hide my power heads below the rock or do I still put them above? Either way, I'm going to put them on the back wall shooting forward because it's only two feet and then they'll blend in. But Depends on the scape, I guess, but we'll see. Or you put the in, or you put the integrated. Uh, have, you, have you seen those? Tell me more. The uh, the um, the pump that actually it, it looks like a rock. Oh, rock! Yep. Can, yeah, and I, you can actually put it into your scape and it'll actually blow through. That could work too. The only problem is when I have wires and it's a bugger to clean it. That's a, that's a downfall, the unless you do. Yeah, that's the only thing to clean it. Yeah, like I'll probably stick with all the MP40s just because they're so easy to maintain. Oh. Um, it's hard to go back now. I, I oh, I'm so happy. I remember I went through so many different types of pumps. Mm -hmm. I'm just with the MP40. I'm just especially if you have a separate uh, wet side. Yeah, that's already cleaned on the side that you have, you know, spend that wow. extra money, get, get get that extra. How many do you have? Whatever, two. Mm -hmm. I have like the 60s or whatever on, you know, on your side, and I have the extra uh, bunch of extras that I keep just clean and then switch them out, throw them in the thing of uh, 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 the, uh, the acid. Yeah, nice and clean. That's the only way to go. 100% um, agree. I, same thing. I have, you know, extra MP40 and 60 wet sides. I literally turn it off, swap, swap, like 30 seconds. And I throw them all in citric acid and let them soak for a couple hours, give them a scrub, throw them back on the shelf for next swap -roo. Yep. Yep. I have been super happy with the Nero. I have the Nero's in, yep. I have the Nero's in my stump. Mm -hmm. So my, I have my, in the Cato chamber, I have the Nero, I think they're all Nero 5s. I have a Nero five in, in my in my Cato chamber, and that basically that's the one chamber. And then in my return, I have another yeah, so another one. And then in the um, uh, where my uh, uh, rest of filtration is, I have uh, a third one, and it basically mm -hmm. just turns the water around in every single section of of my sump. So that's my water odd. just can, completely just always just turning around it's like it's like yep. river rapids down there but you can't hear it and that's one of my biggest things like i don't want to hear like a ripple or a drip or a hum because i want to be able to sit here in like total darkness and just look at this and just i can hear the hum of the lights <laughs> yeah, yeah I, i'm with you i have that slight ocd about a silent tank as oh well. same and like you know uh that's the thing like you know i i had a C, cj you know pump for running something up. i'm like no i i I'm like i can't i can't mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> yep it's just a silent addiction the problem oh, yeah. is real <laughs> but it's so nice when it is um yeah so i don't know it's been debating it all these ideas i need to do something different just to like i don't know mix it up and get me more excited again something something to mix it up but well the last thing actually um uh with zoanthids they're an easy coral 
and I've grown them all the time. About a year ago, I had like, I don't know, it was, it was like the extinction of the dinosaurs in my tank. Like almost every single species of zoanthid just melted away into nothing. In it's, my tank, I had it. I had it all over the place. Ever, I had like a beautiful zo, uh, zo, uh, zo garden, and with all the different types of coral, uh, the, 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 all the different names you name them. I had them in there, and they're all just like flourishing and growing and intermixing. And it was like, oh, beautiful! This, and then all of a sudden, it's like within like a week, it's like, the hell! And nothing changed. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't change anything in my maintenance routine i didn't fiddle with any type of this and that and only now basically uh it's like i think six months later mm -hmm. i didn't i didn't touch any of the plugs or anything i'm actually seeing little itty bitty uh zoanthids starting to pop back up where i had all those zoanthids so they're actually still there mm -hmm. but i just I can't pinpoint why that happened. Yeah. Does that happen, happen to you? Just like a, a, ran, a random, just like, why did my zoanthids just get extinct in my tank right now? I've, yeah. I've never lost them all, I, but I've had a single I'm like, like zoa die off, like just like disappear. Yep. So I, I, I had like two species that didn't die and they were like, like thriving, but the, everything else, like all the, all the, I don't know, the Rastas, the, I don't know, the, People call them the Knicks and all these different crazy mm -hmm. colors, the blue angels, the hornets, whatever you call them. It's so usually just the expensive yeah. ones that melt. Well, yeah, but <laughs> but now all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I see them like pop popping back up. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, cool. I just, I oh, sweet. That's nice if it does. I had one rock of zoanthids. Yeah, that not... every zoa, one of my rocks died. It was a. There's so many names. <laughs> Scrambled egg. We won. I know. And they were they were all all. all Brandy's choppy. Robotic. Rock, everyone on it melted, and it had. Oh. They all melted. That does suck, though. It's not working well. Sorry. You're back. You're, you're back now, but your story was like, uh, 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 all melted. Okay. Yep. I'm like, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah, so one one rock of zoanthids in my tank completely melted, and every other zoa was fine. Oh, I, I, that sucks. I don't okay. know what it was. Like, Bruno, thank you for the five dollar super chat. Appreciate it. Tank crashed a year ago. I came, I'm back in. All right, got a dart frog vivarium going in that time though. Heck yeah, dart frogs are awesome. Uh, are you excited for the Hydros Maven Devon? Okay, we should we should dig into some of the the new upcoming releases. Oh, there's yes, there are a few things. There are, up. there are. What's so, uh, the what's the first one on the list? The first one, I don't know. Well, he brought it to the Maven, so let's start there. Um, okay. I watched the preview stream thing for it. Looks kind of cool. Um, it's surprisingly small. I'm, I'm just gonna rant on my thoughts so far, and you guys can feel whatever. So for the size, it looks actually really tiny for what it is. I mean, I could be off on the size, but looking at the port sizes and stuff, it gives you an idea. Um, supposedly. It has a pump built into it, which I didn't think it did because you don't really see a pump in it. So it must be internal. Um, so it probably uses pinch valves, I'm assuming, similar to the Trident style. And to go through with a single pump head. The fact that it has, you know, test everything off one is pretty cool. I do like that. Um, pricing, I've seen three different prices listed as, like, speculation. So no idea what it actually will be. Um, I am kind of waiting to see, like, what the reagent and what all that stuff is going to come at. Because, I, I don't know, for me... I always look at, like, what's the cost of ownership? What's the ongoing cost? Like, I usually don't care if something costs more up front if it's cheaper long term. I don't know. That's all the stuff that I kind of look at. Um, I appreciate that standalone. That's cool. Um, but, yeah, it's still pretty young. There isn't a ton of details yet. I half think that it was announced because the Neptune announced stuff. So it's like, ah, that's too. Or it could have been just that Reef Blues is coming and then everyone was just like, oh, this is the stuff we're really yeah, get, get go excited for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I speculate one sold the other one, and then they both jumped on it. Um, so the other products... Yeah, the repo. yeah. and yeah. then the other two new products that are coming out is uh, Neptune has a new dose. Um, looks similar to the old one, but quite quite drive, so probably like 
partnering up with Egotech drivers, I'm assuming. Um, so it's quieter, which is always a plus. I mean, I have a dose for dosing. It's great, but I wouldn't really use it for an auto water change or, you know, continuous use because, in my opinion, it's way too loud. So the new one I mean, supposedly is way quieter. So I'm excited to check that out and see how big of a difference it is. I'm curious, too, because I actually run the – I have the doses down in the basement mm-hmm. that I use for my auto water change. I use them down there because uh, I don't hear them. Yeah. Unless you're actually in the basement. Otherwise, it's like, dee, 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 you hear that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm actually really interested. And I actually want to test it out. I want to see if these new ones um, actually can uh, dampen that, especially for, for the auto water change. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be massively quieter. So. I'm really curious to check it out and find out. So we will find out soon. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. And then the other product they released is the nitrogen phosphate tester. The Trident. So, yeah, the Jeez. Trident. The Trident, I don't know, is it called Trident 2? What's it called? I, I think, Trident I, I think NP, nitrate phosphate? Or, yeah. I thought it was B2. I don't know. Anyways, a nitrate phosphate version is being released. So, so my thing about that, I thought... Say this is like a year ago or mm-hmm. more when you you were started hearing the little like little look, the pitter patter about the Trident Two coming up or whatever. Um, I thought it was going to be basically what the Trident is today, and you know nitrate and phosphate. So, but now it seems like it's going to be a a additional unit. So you're going to have it is. Yeah, so now if you're going to have your trident, you have your trident, and then all of a sudden now you're going to have another trident next to it that's just for phosphate Basically. and nitrate. Double so, trident. You, know yeah, what's fu- so. you know what's funny? I, I watch so many comments and stuff, and you have half the camp that is like, oh, I have a second unit, bro. And the other half is like, yes, finally, you know, we got our second unit. And they're, because... And there's another the cap that's like, oh, if it was all in one, everyone would be mad because they have to buy a new Trident, which I don't know. Some of the people's minds that's hard to me, but yeah, I mean, having it having it as, I guess, a, a, a consider it as an add on. Mm-hmm. So now, since it's, since that add on, and you don't have to buy a brand new Trident to say yeah. that what they, what they were talking about is like having what it does now and that now it's more of just like hey you have the trident and now you could just plug this in next to it yeah. and you can go so you know it's 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 an add-on it's like it, if you really think about it, it's like putting on a new module or something mm-hmm. you know so yeah. yeah i i see that satisfying all the existing customers the most or if you're yeah. someone new you'd probably like something all in one oh exactly like me yeah. you know uh me, me personally currently uh, my 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 flavor of the last couple of years was Neptune. Yeah. Um, you know, before I've 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 run other things. Currently, it's you know strictly I have a, I have a, I have a Neptune system. Yeah, it has its issues, but nothing major. So you know, I'm I'm happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. So someone was saying, look at resupplies for seven forty two, and I saw that for the Maven, and I think that feels too cheap. Because that would be like five hundred bucks US, and I feel like it will be more than that. I saw somewhere else like a yeah. thousand and twelve hundred. So yeah, the, the resupplies price seem really cheap to me, but time will tell, I guess. Dun dun dun. So, um, I mean, if, if you compare it to like a uh, like a Alcatronic or something, that's, yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so in my opinion, it's gonna be like a thousand to twelve hundred. That that's my guess. Um, I can't see being five to seven. I mean, they'll sell a ton if it is, if it works well. But my, oh, yeah. I speculate but, it will be more just either that or they'll be like, depends on the region, right? The region could cost more and they'll sell it cheaper. That's another business model, right? Get you in there and then get you on this region subscription plan. So, depends. <laughs> it's true, it is. Um, yeah, so I don't know. D- different aspects, different things. Uh, I know it makes me want to put my and stuff back on my tank well right now i have my ghl on the tank and it's like at end of life with the whatever the um current <laughs> <laughs> that's really someone get bring bandwidth. 
<laughs> we will use this to buy her a really long Ethernet cable for next time. We'll get you like a 50 foot cable wherever your router is, and we'll string it across the house. Cable. Is anything plugged into the I other side of it? Cable. Is the other end plugged in? I'm sure. I hope. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Maybe that was the problem. He just gave you the cable with this one end. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> You didn't say what are, you were going to do with yeah. that. Are you yeah, using a GHL as a modem? <laughs> <laughs> that would yeah. be terrible. Okay, Ryan. It's, it's end of life, though, and so I need, to, I need to update it with the PC, which means dragging it in here. And now that I have a PC, I had a Mac beforehand, and it's just hmm. not something I've gotten around to. And I think it's about to, like, stop working if I don't do the update. Well, uh, you know, G the thing with the different types of, uh, you know, system, I consider like uh, um, GHL like, like, like the, like the Linux, you know? So, okay, here. Okay. So Brandy, the, the, let's get into the controller rabbit hole for a minute here. Okay. How, <laughs> how, how is, the, okay. So you're using the GHL right now. I'm laughing about the bandwidth thing. I know. <laughs> that was awesome. Yes. Thank you. Love it. Um, how, how do you like the GHL overall? I have loved it, except for the fact I switched to it because I wanted the Ion Director. Yep. And I'm very disappointed that I still do not have an Ion Director. <laughs> Fair. Fair enough. Wait, is that and even now, like, is that released in Out in the Wild? I remember seeing like the coming soon things for ages, but. And I, there were people who got one as a sample. I was hoping I could get a sample yep. one. Um, but I did it, and mm -hmm. so I feel like I, I switched from Nept from GHL to Neptune. Um, yeah. or no, the other way from Neptune to GHL because I thought I was getting an Ion Director, and um, and four months was what I was told like two years ago, and I still don't have one, so that's kind of disappointing. Yeah, the 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 doser and everything worked incredible i've never had yeah. a failure um my probes stay pretty calibrated mm -hmm. um like it, it's how, it's pretty how, hardcore it just how long has, give a lot of have options. you been running the ghl with your system okay so Two it's, it's half, close to the years? same thing with with my system yeah, I think I already had GHL okay. when you got your system, didn't I? I think so, or, or, or you were you were going to? G I, I, I I don't remember. No, I think I think I had already switched to GHL when you were putting yours in because I remember you sent, sending me like pictures of the drawers. Oh yeah, and yeah, yeah. I was showing you my yeah, stuff. So yeah, so it's it's interesting to sort of like compare. Like I had I've I I strictly run a a a Neptune system on my system and i and i could say like oh yeah i haven't really had any problems the only really problem i really had was like my uh my ato was like you know finicky for a little bit but then i rebooted it a couple times and started working mm -hmm. so i had lots of issues though like the dose you remember the dose thing and the spanking it well see i like i my, my dose has been running for three years you know I mean, that, that's the thing, right? Story. Like, if it works for you, that's great. Yeah, yeah my my dose would um, just randomly start turning on, and it wouldn't stop unless I hit it. Oh, that's and... it's, a, it's like the old TV, you know, it started, like, coming up. The yeah, that's, that's right. why I hit it. Yeah, I tried to, like, unplug it and, like, do all kinds of stuff, and yeah. out of frustration, I hit it, and I have it on camera, and it literally looks like I'm spanking it. Yeah. Um, and it stopped then, but then it started back like 20 minutes later. And the only way I could ever get it to turn off was to hit it, mm -hmm. which is probably an electrical problem, right? Um, probably a connection. Problem. So, yeah. and then I had, I had is an issue with the auto feeder spinning too many times and hmm. like Weird. dumping the entire contents into the tank and Ugh. the ATK, I had a couple of issues with it. So after like, a uh, like Interesting. A, yeah. a couple of hardware problems. I switched to GHL and I've never had a single hardware problem. And again, would, could just be yeah. lucky with GHL. But. Well, I would argue that GHL hardware is probably some of the best. Like they built, they're really well built out of like all the companies, like for sure. Yeah. Good old German engineering. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So on, 
I have had an, an entire thing of food dumped in the tank, nor have I had an entire container of dosing chemicals dumped into the Wait, tank. Wait, so, do they have an auto feeder? I'm happy with it. Is there a GHL auto feeder? No, I just have a, one of the like okay. the Eheim <laughs> cheap ones on there. And oh, I well, that's that issue, right? Compared, like yeah. I had a cheap like twelve dollar no a twelve dollar auto feeder. I haven't had issues with, but like the what is it seventy eighty dollars wasn't working right. Well, so it, yeah, it, it's interesting with the with the um, with the GHL. It's like the hardware is like up here, but the, the software, the hardware, but the software is like yeah. But with like Neptune, the the hardware is like, uh, like, is this is this like sturdy? Is it gonna fall apart? But they but the software is like, you know, e yeah, e e easy to get through, and it's it's, it's great. Your software. software is incredible. Uh, so like, yeah, it's really yeah. Oh, trade off. And then we have to also talk about hydros. Yeah. So so okay. So so what's what's your review of the hydros in comparison to the hardware and the software? Since you're so <laughs> I've never used hydros. So I, I, mm -hmm. I really would like to, I want, to, I want to get my hands on it. Um, mm -hmm. I played with the software and I gave Carlos like this really convoluted thing. I wanted the hydros to do like a bunch of if then statements. Yeah. And he was like, I don't know if it can do this. And so like we were sitting there playing with it and it was very straightforward. We got it to do exactly what I wanted it to do. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't confusing to figure out where to go into, to, put in whichever statement it was it felt like you know like the kid programming games where it's like put a triangle then that that's what the hydro programming <laughs> system feels like to me yeah like you're programming but at a very basic level and it's it's it feels almost yeah. impossible to mess it up it's like c plus plus fair have you used it alex better uh you know what um i haven't used it personally okay i have i have tinkered with it i have mm -hmm. a few uh buddies that uh do run on their systems uh use it on uh some of their uh uh actually grow out grow out systems um and to me i'm 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 a, a little bit on the visual side i like the hydros it sort of looks like a like a one of those like like switchboards you have all these like yeah. plugs going into it, and all the lights and the little little thing. It looks cool. Um, again, um, I don't have the best knowledge with the hydros. Mm -hmm. I've looked into the programming into it, and uh, I mean, I gotta say, I do like the. Um, they have that um, leak detection rope, yeah. which is pretty cool. Which is cool because you could like line that in back of your sump and this night and because like Neptune's has little 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 puck square oh. things you put everywhere. You could Which probably get some like the hor have. for you. You could get the horse sapper wire and hook it up to a brick up box. I bet you would work. <laughs> Sorry, if you really want one with your Neptune, I just thought about that. That's actually I. It's funny you mentioned that. That's, that would actually work. We, we I think would. so. I think so. It would work. Yeah. yeah. I think so. And I, I, I got to say, the the uh, people that say, "Oh, I, I don't need the ant, uh, I don't need the leak detection." You know what? Um, I had a fitting <laughs> underneath my tank that I didn't realize was leaky very slowly. And mm -hmm. again, me in the past, you know, few months, I haven't been too, you know, visual with stuff underneath there. And then uh, this one day, I, all of a sudden, I get a notification on my neptunes thing I'm like oh what do you mean leak detection circuits closed so, and I, I was at work i call my wife i'm like is there a leak she's like no everything's fine I'm like, okay i come home i i, I like, open the sump and i see dry salt everywhere i'm like oh I'm like, I'm like okay there's something going on here and i, I look at there's like it was there's like a one i was like staring at it for like almost like 15 minutes and then finally, I just saw like a one like bloop. I'm like, okay, there it is. JB Weld for the win. <laughs> gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. <laughs> well, at least you found it and fixed yeah, it. Yeah, I, I would be willing. I played enough with hydros that I've played enough with hydros. I would say that their their software is the best. Well, I think I. But you can like there. There's anything as complex. You can get as complex with it as you possibly want. That's cool. 
So I, I so I, so then I guess the Hydrus is more of than like the Linux then, where you can like do whatever you want with it. You can program it however you want. Reasonably so. Yeah, I wouldn't say however you want. Like it's very very well. I, I'm I'm so compared to uh, Neptune, where you can put in basically can you can write your own. Basically, if yeah. this does that, then so you this know does that. Yeah. You can't like write it. it yeah. Like, you know how it, it's like physically typing on Neptune? Yeah. And Hydro, you you have like a selection of which item you want to use. So there's no issues with typos or whatever. But you can pretty much do whatever you want with a function. So it, it's coding, but it's preventing the typos that people get when they're coding. So that, that it's like guardrails on it, but like there, on there is no, <laughs> yeah, which is how I, the only way I bowl and I still somehow. You're like, yes, off. yes. It's for the kids. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, that, that's what I mean. Like it's like, it reminds me of like a, a kid's programming tool, mm. but Fair. you can get as complicated as you possibly want with it. Cause what I, the idea I had in my head, Carlos is like, I don't know that we can do that. Mm -hmm. and he started mess and it was very straightforward like we didn't have to go and like play with settings at all and he was like huh so imagine there, that. there are actually like that many options then you can, you can do like yeah. combiner statements where you just keep adding on different things gotcha okay yeah yeah i, I try to throw some tricky ones at it and i think there was like one or two things that i couldn't quite get but most things i seem to be able to do being advanced, I found being able to just type what I want with the Neptune a bit easier, but I could usually figure it out with the Hydros as well. Um, yeah. Or GHL, I could yeah. figure it out after reading the manual for half an hour. <laughs> uh. Even then, even then, at the time I was messaging Vinny, like, I don't know what to click into. Like, what does this mean? Like, yep. inverted what? Like, like I, it's, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was reading the German part. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but again like i think their build quality is like phenomenal but the software oh. is like windows mm -hmm. 98 i mean it, it could use some worse easy... than windows 98 it's because it's one. also like some of the the phrasings i well, assume must be like and 95 were, we were good but we were good platforms <laughs> yeah. hey i had what, what is this called you don't even want to know the <laughs> The power or something I, I don't know whatever they call the power settings it doesn't ever make sense to me and i have to like yeah. go through every single heading to figure out where i need to be to like i know what setting i want to change and what it looks like but mm -hmm. i don't know the name of the tab because it, well, it's not logical i mean I, I, again it's because you're not german if you were it'd be like ah makes perfect sense i just need to change to german and yeah, as soon as i become good. german i'll understand it yeah it's exactly. my no, fault it, yeah it's the it, it, it's the it's the, the design too that I I I like of the GHL. It's a very very sleek, very like you know it looks like it's like it's like there and like you know stacks onto each other like you could it's almost like a like the old fashioned like 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 a stereo system from like the eighties you know everything stacks up really nice and you know it, it's you could put it in the cab cabinet it just it looks good you know and and then I'm like I I turn around and I look at my Net Neptunes and like looks good but uh, you know then the circus music sort of starts in the background <laughs> yeah pretty much so i don't know it's interesting they're all you know they all have their pros and cons like everything in life i get so many freaking questions about which ones are this one or which one you know what's better than this one and everything has their pros and cons so you know there's certain things I like about one system there's certain things I like about the other system so. It's really what works for you. It's, it's it's the same as, you know, just like in reef keeping in general, it's really what's going to be easier or what you're comfortable with. You know, there's mm -hmm. not really a right or a wrong answer to a lot of these things. That's why you can get into some of these conversations and you can talk for hours and hours and hours about like one little topic. Yeah. Just, there's, there, there isn't a right and wrong answer. And the people that say that there are... Mm, I disagree. Yeah, pretty much. Endless rabbit holes. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, I do have to pack her up in about five minutes. So if there's any burning questions in the chat that we didn't ask, feel free to ask again. I just have to say, I don't know how you listen and type at the same time. The second I start typing, I ignore what's being said. 
by you guys. My, <laughs> years of multitasking paying no off right now. Yeah, what's going on? My, my, my screen uh -huh. is all messed up, so I can't see really any of the chat. And I, I'm afraid to press anything that I might lose everything right now. So, <laughs> Yep. Tracy, I appreciate the thought. Thank you. <laughs> Tra Something's Tracy pretty... is shadow banned from giving... Um... <laughs> <laughs> The, you shall not support cat. creators. <laughs> oh, this is like completely unrelated. We don't want your money. But how are we talking about like super old operating systems the other day? I had to like work with like an emulated <laughs> one of like a 30 year old one the other day. It was like so painful of going back way, 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 way back. Which, which, which system? Spark. Sun OS Spark. I had to get... Uh, basically like emulate something some super old server that was questionably dying from like a bazillion years ago that's, so that was um, interesting that's <laughs> something my, my dad is completely oh, he's he's a senior software engineer yeah so he's he's all uh, he's been in the business since like you know the boom of the 80s yeah and so all I, I, coming coming home he had the, when he would come home and or he would talk about a new operating system he's like so yeah there's this new thing called like uh you know windows coming out and <laughs> like, it, yep. it, was, it was it was fun seeing that uh progression with all the systems hey, but I, 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 I remember I, all these when i was a young lad so <laughs> I, I i still think 95 was, was the best one it was that's when it was in its prime yeah i, I think that 95 was one of the best ones yep S speaking of tridents i got my little diy service kit so it's on my to-do list this week nice yep nice. give her some love finally windows 3.1 there you go with that way back hey i remember 3.1 i'm gonna have to like, Bye -bye. Have to like get the service thing oh welcome than we were talking about your giant elegance corals earlier Dan, since you're on is there any way to tell about Differences in elegance corals from the different regions. This was the beginning conversation. Malaysia right? yeah, and yeah. Australia, if they were like, right? if you had a uh, you know, Malaysian and an Aussie like right next to each other, similar size, similar color, similar everything, what are the characteristics that you could be like, oh, that's an Aussie, that's a Malaysian? If Dan can't tell, none of us yeah. can tell. Exactly. Yeah, we have no hope. <laughs> um, film that we're process. Done. Okay. <laughs> Film that fun process. I will do a video about to how do to like do this. I need to do like an entire read, like all the new, all the cable lines, all the dosing stuff, everything redone on my Neptune system. Do they sell a kit like that? That's just redo it all for the Trident uh, or for the dose. All of them, because if I'm going to put it back on, though, I should just get the new dosers, not get well, the old dosers. This is the Trident service kit. You can buy new dosing heads for your doser but your doser is probably fine unless you've used it for like years it's probably fine the but doser that i had heads. to spank to get it to work oh yeah, yeah i would right. warranty that baby warranty <laughs> it's that not yeah good. that sounds yeah. like something's loose inside or something sketchy like if it's me yeah, i would like pop out the screws and look and make sure there's nothing loose but if you don't want to do yeah, that there's no wires or something yeah yeah like it's i'm perfectly can. fine taking apart something and looking at it but yeah that's where it's going the trash can yeah. i'm gonna just get the new dosers that are quiet anyway quiet I, I, i'm excited I'm, to see how I, i'm actually excited i want to i, I want to try them out i have i have two up here that i have to test out and then i think i have like four downstairs that i have to but just like oh do i, I gotta go through and reattach them and reprogram it but it's okay i'm gonna do yeah. it for science for science for science, for science. Okay, now this since we're talking about maintenance things, um, any doser you have, any auto tester you have, eventually they're all going to require maintenance. Um, that we, Brandy and I, were both, you know, actually all of us, we've both done lots of like moderating Facebook groups. You see all these things about stuff, and like, oh yeah, this is amazing, and then eventually like, oh yeah, this sucks, and usually it's because <laughs> you're overdue for your maintenance on it. Like my Trident, for instance, has been amazing for the last two years. And then the last month or so, I've been starting to get wonky results. I'm like, okay, it says that a year and a half, you're supposed to maintain it. I'm pushing two years. It's probably do. And so I picked this I'm, up. Six. I'm going on three years in my, and yeah. mine is, is getting a little weird, you know? Yeah. And it's, okay, for example, like when you, with your car, 
you've been driving it for three years. I guarantee that for three years, you if you haven't done a oil change or something mm-hmm. to it, you, you, sh- yeah. you should. But yeah, like no, no. 100%. It, even my Alcatronic. Same thing. It was, you know, my results were starting to get a little weird. Same thing. I was like, okay, you're probably way overdue for maintenance. So I redid all my tubing, you know, put in a new pH probe, recalibrate it. And now it's good as new again. But a lot of, I think people think a lot of these things is go forever. Like they do if you maintain it, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, like for, for example, like the, the, the MP60, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the dry side. Okay. If you really think about it and you, you step back and you really think like how long this thing has been spinning and that mechanism inside has been vibrating, spinning and changing and the different variation of volts going through it to change it, this and that. And it's been, it's doing that for like the last four years. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, eventually, you know, there's a thing called, you know, Empathy. Everything, yeah. <laughs> everything, every, everything breaks down in the universe, you yeah. know, even, you know, especially, especially mechanical, uh, you know, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. So even if you do all your maintenance and this and that, and like, I, I, cause I've, I've seen a post before, like, oh, wow, it's been like six years and this MP40, like, you know, crapped out on me. That, no, that's like <laughs> garbage. Like, dude, no, like that, that's awesome. You know, it's lasted you that long. And you've had no problems with it. That's that's pretty cool, you know, you know. Yeah. And the thing the thing is, you know, we're dealing with you know high amounts of electricity, lots of salt water. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not the greatest environment for mechanical or or electrical things. You know, that things will break down, especially with corrosion of salt or and just constant. You know, like some some of the pumps. You know, mm-hmm. I've had I've had I've had a Varios, okay, running nonstop for three years. Yeah. You know, for a pump, any type of pump, even like my Varios has been solid yeah. as I'll get out. And, um, I have two of them. I love and them. And like, just not not even not not in the aquarium world, but thinking like in the you know industrial or commercial or other type of, you know, instances where you're running into things running for that long for three years, a pump running for three years like that, that that's not bad. Mm-hmm. So no. there's something set, said about like different products, you know, and um, the, the longevity of what you get out of them, especially yeah. if you do, you know, the a required maintenance for them. Well, it, take and care that's a- of and that's the thing. If you do have a tester, a dose, or something that's a little bit off or wacky, or your return pump's not putting on as flow as it's used to, that's usually a sign that you should maintain it. You know, I don't care what brand it is, you know, doser, pumps, whatever, tester, like, they all require periodic maintenance. Um, just because I see lots of people, like, you know, all these different extreme opinions and guarantee a lot of it's maintenance-based. Oh, yeah. Right. Sometimes there's going to be a, a bad thing in the batch. It doesn't mean that that's For necessarily sure. a problem. Like there's a certain failure rate that's okay. There's a certain failure rate that's not okay. Mm-hmm. But um, exactly, is exactly. Love your reef gear, so it loves you back and keeps your crows alive and happy. Moral of the day. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have to wrap it up? But Brandy, Alex, thanks for hanging out, guys. Definitely. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been good. Uh, Bruno, Matt Street, thank you guys for the super chat. You'll work on getting Brandy an Ethernet cable. I would bring you one <laughs> if I was coming to wrap. <laughs> <laughs> I have an Ethernet cable. We plugged it in like. Well, well it kicked it. in because it's your video is good now and you're no longer a robot. But... I made my kid get off the PlayStation. Ah, I'm... you're stealing your internet. <laughs> I'm going to send you a better one, like with a really thick, like shielded cable. I'm going to get you a good one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. We'll but yeah. Figure it out. Awesome. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys for hanging out. Thank you guys for joining me. And we'll catch you guys in the next classroom. Talk to you later. Take care.